states, governments, officials, they have platforms. But we, the people, do not have that kind of interactive platform. So uh, the only way possible for the people is just to use that narrow room to display uh, their cause, the cause which probably they might have been suffering from for a long period of time. And to be honest with you, for African athletes, this is the best platform that that sometimes should be man, uh, uh, deployed or used by our athletes to speak what is really on the ground in Africa. Because uh, there is a problem of freedom of expression. There is a problem of uh, free flow of information in Africa. Uh, internet does, uh, has not penetrated well into into African uh, continent. So probably this is one of our our, our opportunities to just tell the world what we what what we practice on a daily basis. I see. That's what that's what I I'm not promoting for for the Olympic to be uh, political, but uh, there has to be a balancing uh, or there has to be an equilibrium where uh, where uh, you know very uh, sensitive issues like that of the Oromo for example the Oromo of Ethiopia who've been suffering uh, should be given a pass uh, I I agree with what Henick said about the Olympic stage being a great platform to put out these issues that a lot of people probably had never heard about before he made that gesture when he crossed the finish line. Uh, I, I wasn't aware of the plight of the uh, Oromo people, and uh, I applaud him for mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, it brought back memories of uh, 68 in Mexico City with uh, John Carlos and Tommy Smith, Tommy Smith doing the Black Power salute mm -hmm. uh, on top of the medals podium. Correct. And... Uh, I don't know if you can avoid these types of uh, political statements, but I, I, I consider this one of the most powerful that I've seen uh, at an Olympics. I mean, 